come out your shoulder. Like, open the bruise up and let some of the bruised blood come out your shoulder. Seven talents, nine projects, four names, and one pioneer. Today we take a deep dive into the long and complicated history of the man known as Barrington Hendricks, aka Devon Hendricks, aka the Rockwood Escape Plan, aka JPEG Mafia. Till Polly came around, Polly. took it all from me. Polly. Damn, Polly. Our story begins where all great stories begin, the United States presence in the Middle East. A young man by the name of Barrington Devon Hendricks has enlisted into the Air Force in order to make enough money to get out of the rough neighborhood he grew up in. After being stationed in Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, and North America, Hendricks would make one final move that would change his life forever. If there's one thing that most Americans know about Japan, it's that it's very different. The culture there is completely separate and as different as possible from the culture in the US. And for someone who's been stuck in the Middle East for a couple of years, I'm sure that this brand new environment full of new ideas and art was appealing to Hendrix. And not only did the Japanese style of art inspire him to start creating, a lot of their technologies would also rub off on him. This leads us to 2009. An account on the website Bandcamp has been created under the name Devon Hendrix, The Rockwood Escape Plan, a play on well, his actual name, Devon Hendricks, just spelled differently. And on August 26, the account would release a project that would inspire the creation of an entirely new genre of music. Before we talk about the foresight and pure creative genius behind Dreamcast Summer Songs, we need to first talk about the ideas behind the album. Dreamcast Summer Songs is a six-track instrumental record that was apparently produced from 2007 to 2009. In the description of the album, Hendrix simply wrote, Produced from 2007 to 2009, inspired by Dreamcast, DC, I love you baby. And then, in the lines below, Hendrix writes in Japanese, I love Dreamcast, Generation Y. Now, on Hendrix's Genius page, there is an album called Generation Y, except there's literally no cover and no tracks associated with the project. However, after doing some digging on a subreddit, I found out that for some reason Hendrix decided to delete Generation Y off of the internet. And while I, I could talk about this project more, I just feel like if Hendrix didn't want people seeing it, there's really no reason to talk about it or include it in his discography. So of course, back to Dreamcast Summer Songs. Each track is named after a different Dreamcast video game. And while this album is inspired by these games, uh, that was before my time. I didn't play these games, let alone even play on the gaming console in question. So how does this album hold up to someone who has never played these types of games before? The answer is beautifully. I, I really do love this album. The second track, Bloody Roar, was my most listened to song this week, and all the other tracks hold up just as well. The sample work is out of this world, the vibes are there, and as per any Devon Hendrix or JPEG Mafia project, it was entirely produced, mixed, and mastered by, of course, the man himself. And while this album is great for all these reasons, it's also incredibly ahead of its time. This album is one of the earliest examples of the beginning ideas of Vaporwave, a genre of music that wouldn't be popularized until later in the 2010s. In fact, this album came out a whole year before albums that people have cited as the very first examples of Vaporwave, and a lot of the musical ideas expressed on those albums are seen here on this project as well. The toned down vocal samples, the eclectic synths, it's all here. So by creating this project, Hendrix was making history and paving the way for future Vaporwave artists to build the genre from the ground up. So if you're looking for the soil that helped build the tree that now is Vaporwave, I would highly, highly, highly recommend Dreamcast Summer Songs. Dreamcast Summer Songs was a great first project for Devon Hendrix, but what would happen when he started to mix these ideas with his own vocals and his own raps? But I would like to say before we talk about the Ghost Pop Tape, that in between Dreamcast Summer Songs and this project, there were two separate albums released under the Devon Hendrix name. These of course being Joe Chill World and the self-titled The Rockwood Escape Plan. And while both these projects are good, I'm going to skip over them just because I feel like the Ghost Pop Tape really is the culmination of all the ideas on both of those albums, and I think that it would just be redundant to bring up those earlier projects. But this album is also so important because this is the album where Devon Hendrix dies. I mean, not literally, because, you know, JPEG Mafia still exists, but this will be the last project put out underneath the Devon Hendrix name. And so, not only is this the album where Devon Hendrix dies, it's also the album where we see JPEG Mafia be born. The Ghost Pop Tape was released on October 22nd, 2013, on Hendrix's birthday. The album is 18 tracks long, with 7 tracks added on the end as the expanded edition. 
Once again, the description of the record just read Generation Y in Japanese. Though, through my research, I have found that the Ghost Pop tape was originally titled Gen Y to the 5th, but after some track renaming and moving around, the project was eventually re-released, as what we would see on Bandcamp today. This album does a really good job of expanding on the cloudy and dreamlike sounds on his earlier projects and adding in vocals and raps to match the vibe of the production. The sound on this album has become a blueprint of sort of future JPEG Mafia projects. Funny song titles, hazy samples, fast drum beats, and of course, distorted vocals. The Ghost Pop tape has a somewhat cult following among JPEG Mafia fans. It's like a secret within a secret, almost like a test to see if you're just a JPEG Mafia fan or if you're really a Barrington Devon Hendrix fan. I think it's also worth a mention that this album kind of started the trend of JPEG Mafia covering popular songs. Like, you know, he did a Call Me Maybe cover on this album, that's just... Mm, chef's kiss. And once again, with the release of the Ghost Pop tape, Devon Hendrix's musical career was over. But JPEG Mafia's music career was just about to start. Uh. Prior to making this video, I had personally never heard this album before, and boy am I glad that I did. This album is phenomenal. Communist Low Jams is one of the most politically charged and lyrical Peggy albums that he's released. I think that by far my favorite moment off of this album has to be the second half of the track Lenny, where he calls out rock and roll musicians for hating hip hop, and it perfectly embodies everything that I love about Peggy as a whole. Real shit, fuck Motorhead, man. And fuck any of these old ass motherfuckers who think anything with our guitars is in music, motherfucker. Y'all stole that genre in the first place. Now you wanna shit on rap? Fuck you, what, what's wrong with y'all niggas, man? It's like they y'all y'all can't be satisfied with anything that doesn't have your face on it, man. Fuck out of here, man. Fuck that shit. The message, the delivery, it's all there. And of course, it wouldn't be a JPEG Mafia album without some of the best song titles in the game. Once they build a Starbucks, it's over. I'll never forgive hipsters for what they did to Brooklyn. And of course, how could I forget Bitcoin assassination? I mean, fuck off, these are gold. My only quarrel with this album is the production. It's not inherently bad, it's just not as in your face as his other releases. And because of that, it was a bit underwhelming. But still, a great first album under the JPEG Mafia name. I never heard something so... Yo. I have a love-hate relationship with Black Ben Carson. On the one hand, it has songs that I love, like All Caps No Spaces and The 27 Club, but but it also has songs that I'm just, I'm really not a fan of, like Digital Blackface and What's Cracking. I like to think of this album as veteran light. The production is a lot grittier like veteran, but it's also a lot less refined. But of course, we have to address the elephant in the room with this album, and that would be track number 12, I Just Killed a Cop and Now I'm Horny. Now, the song is essentially Peggy talking about police brutality and his thoughts on the killings of innocent black men, as well as other cultural narratives he feels that have been pushed onto black people in recent years. However, the title, as well as the intro, which features a sample of the murder of Deputy Kyle Dinkler, are what caused the controversy surrounding the track. And while I'm not going to defend the title of the track, I will defend the use of the sample. The video footage of Deputy Dinkler being killed is frequently used to teach police officers to not hesitate in defending themselves, a practice that has been put under a lot of scrutiny in recent years. Peggy later said that he definitely did sympathize with the officer, because, of course, the murder of an innocent police officer is a terrible thing. The sample was much more of a criticism of the way that police officers are trained with a video than what actually occurred on that day. So of course, if you are thinking of listening to this album, proceed with caution. But with the end of Black Band Carson, we're about to enter a whole nother world. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to my most listened album of 2020, Veteran. Hulk Hogan, known to keep a thing smoking. Steady fucking with a blonde, I think I'm Frank. DJ Snitch, Bill, I can't deal with all these So, what can I say about my third favorite album of all time that hasn't already been said? This is, in my opinion, the JPEG Mafia album with the best production. As I said before, Veteran kept the harsh production style of Black Ben Carson, but it also cleaned it up a bit, adding more moments of calm and reflection in with the loud and brash noise that songs like Thug Tears or Baby I'm Bleeding have. I think the best example of a track that perfectly embodies the sound of Veteran is Rock and Roll is Dead. Not only does it have a classic JPEG Mafia title, but the track starts with harsh bass and skippy drums, then halfway through the beat switches to embody a more melodic version of the song. And I love it, it's one of my favorite songs off the album. Veteran is a one-of-a-kind project from a one-of-a-kind artist. I have yet to find an album that gives off the same vibe or sounds even remotely similar to this project. I have yet to find an album even remotely similar to this, even in JPEG Mafia's discography. And his next album is just as unique. Let's do it. <laughs> Scrub is a guy who thinks he's fly, you know. A lot of JPEG fans consider this album to not only be the way they found out about Peggy, but also to be its magnum opus. 
All My Heroes Are Cornballs does a great job of taking elements from a lot of previous Peggy songs and putting them into one album. The rapping from Call Me to Slow Jams, the moments of reflection on Veteran, and even the singing from the Ghost Pop tape. All My Heroes Are Cornballs also features some of my favorite Japing Mafia songs like Free the Frail, Post Verified Lifestyle, and of course, How Could I Forget, Jesus Forgive Me, I Am a Thought. And speaking of track names, once again Peggy is on his bullshit with the song titles, with gems such as Keenan vs. Kel, Beta Male Strategies, Thought Tactics, Life is Hard, Here's a song about Sorel, Basic Bitch Tear Gas, which is actually just a cover of TLC's song No Scrubs, and much like the previously mentioned Call Me Maybe cover, he does it justice while putting his own spin on it. After All My Heroes Are Cornballs, I expected to see a bit of a break from JPEG for a while. After all, he had banged out two masterpieces with only one year difference, which is why I was surprised in 2020 when he started releasing singles. <laughs> EP wasn't just released all at once. Peggy slowly rolled out single after single for months, teasing and teasing a project all the way until EP was released in late 2020. The album, or EP, or I don't know, whatever the fuck you want to call it, featured all the singles he had released in 2020, as well as an extra track titled Super Tuesday. I like to look at the project as more of a collection of songs than an album. I just feel like they stand better more as individual songs than as a thematic and connective work. But I do feel like this is intentional, especially since the songs were originally released by themselves. However, this isn't the end to the JPEG Mafia story. EP2 is confirmed to be coming out sometime this year, possibly even in February, as some have speculated. And since no singles have come out yet, I do hope that this project will show a little more of Peggy's natural ability to create a project that flows. But until then, we'll just have to sit and hope and wait for more. But before this video does end, I do want to give a special shout out to these Redditors for creating this crazy, crazy good Google Doc that kind of had a special timeline, if you will, uh, to help me figure out exactly when these projects were released because it was hard. Putting all this research together was really hard. JPEG Mafia did not make it easy to find out about his past albums. So thank you to those users. This really helped a lot. And for those who don't know, me and my buddies, uh, Bucket of Jake and Luke On Demand, have started a podcast. So if you want to check that out, link will be in the description as well. And of course, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.